Hello fellow aviators, this is Vince Riley, CFI, I Fixed Wing, and Rotor Wing. Thanks for joining me for this quick intro to ADS-B, or Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. If you like these videos, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you'll be notified when new videos are released. So first we need to answer the question, why? Why did the FAA decide to go with ADS-B? Well, the first major answer is to modernize air traffic control systems to be able to more accurately monitor the increase in air traffic. Also, one of the major limitations of traditional radar systems is that they were line of sight. This meant at a high enough altitude, the radar system could pick you up. However, if you were lower in altitude, it would be easy for ground clutter or terrain features to block radar providing location services to ATC. On the FAA's website, you can read the ads B as real-time precision, shared situational awareness, and advanced applications for pilots and controllers. What does that mean for us? Well, without getting too technical, we'll avoid all the electrical witchcraft which happens during communications between all the ground systems. In a nutshell, ground stations communicate directly with aircraft, while aircraft can communicate with each other. The information transmitted and received by ads B includes tail number, aircraft type, GPS enhanced ground speed, direction, altitude, route, and all of this information is reported every second. Whereas traditional radar only provides a fraction of this information and is only transmitted every 5 to 12 seconds. The older radar systems provided a great service but were often hampered by obscurations or terrain. While most of the traditional ground-based systems are being phased out, some still exist and are integrated into the ADSB network. The new ADS-B system covers the United States and other areas almost completely with very few limitations concerning altitude or ground clutter. The only limitation at this time is the lack of towers which may cause limited coverage in areas surrounded by mountains, but we'll discuss that later. Right now there are two systems installed on aircraft. One is the UAT or Universal Access Transmitter which operates at 978 MHz. When aircraft are using 978 MHz they can continually update and report their position to not only the ground stations, but also to other aircraft using the same 978 MHz system. The other ADSB system that can be installed in aircraft, especially for those flying in Class A airspace above 18,000 feet, are required to have the 1090 MHz extended squitter system. Sometimes aircraft will have different systems installed and normally would not be able to share their positions with each other. However, a UAT equipped aircraft can broadcast its position to ground towers. The ground towers in turn using ADS-R or the rebroadcast system will rebroadcast that information to other aircraft on both systems. Additionally, TISB or Traffic Information Services Broadcast blends the traditional radar system targets into the ADS-B system to be rebroadcasted for all users. FISB, or Flight Information Services Broadcast, is another enhancement that comes with the ADS-B system. FISB provides ADS-B in equipped aircraft with a suite of advisory aeronautical and weather information products to enhance the user's situational awareness. FISB information transmitted to your ADS-B in system can display SIGMETs, AIRMETs, weather radar, and forecasts, just to name a few. Of course, to see all of this information, you'll need something to be able to display the information from your ADS-B in device. For example, if you have a Stratus 3 system, traffic can be displayed on your iPad through ForeFlight, as well as the other services available. The FAA has done a great job describing the ADS-B system. I'll put a link in the video description below. A great feature of the links in the website allows you to see a demonstration of ADS-B coverage at different altitudes. If you download the free Google Earth Pro on your computer, you can click the link on the FAA website, download the file, and it'll open in Google Earth Pro. Once opened, you can select different altitudes to see coverage areas. As you can see from the 500 AGL map, there are quite a few areas that still need towers to be installed to enhance coverage. So, like all electronic systems, it does have a few areas that are not covered. For example, valleys surrounded by very large mountains but this will be resolved when additional towers will be installed as air traffic density increases. But remember, even in the absence of towers, aircraft will be able to communicate with each other to provide accurate location and direction information. One of the coolest enhancements in my opinion is the fact that now ground controllers can see you from the moment you start moving on the airport. In the old days, you were told not to turn on your transponder until right before takeoff. 
Now, anytime you're operating, your transponder should be in altitude mode and transmitting, with the exception of if you're working in your hangar or around the hangar area and there's no intent to fly. Requirements for ADS-B can be found in section 91225. You should take some time to familiarize yourself with the requirements for ADS-B. And as usual, there's an exception for aircraft that don't have electrical systems as long as the aircraft remains outside of Class B or Class C airspace areas and maintains an altitude below 10,000 feet. So where do you need ADS-B? FAR 91.225 states, within Class B airspace areas and within 30 nautical miles of an airport listed in Appendix D. You need it above the ceiling and within lateral boundaries of Class B or Class C, so you can't go over Class B or Class C airspace. You need ADS-B equipment aircraft to fly in Class E airspace above 10,000 feet MSL, unless you're at an altitude of 2,500 feet AGL or below. And of course, Class E airspace above 3,000 feet MSL over the Gulf of Mexico from the coastline of the United States out to 12 nautical miles. Blah, blah, blah. This is all fine and dandy. The best place to review these requirements is to visit the FAA's decision flowchart. I'll put a link also in the description below. In my opinion, I think this is a great resource from the FAA. So let's review. You need ADS-B in Class A airspace, and that's the 1090 MHz ES version. You need 978 MHz UAT version in Class E airspace above 10,000 feet MSL except for when 2,500 feet AGL. In Class B airspace, in Class C airspace, which includes all of the lateral boundaries of Class C up to 10,000 feet, but not below the lateral boundaries. This also applies to Class B airspace, but don't forget the 30 nautical mile ring. ADS-B is required anywhere inside from the ground up to 10,000 feet when you're inside the 30 nautical mile ring. It is not needed in surface Class E airspace or in Class D airspace. Here again, the FAA has another great resource. You can download this picture at a link provided in the description below the video. Now, let's do some quick practical exercises. If you're flying just north of Atlanta, right here at 1500 feet AGL, do you need ADS-B? First, what type of airspace are you in? Correct, Class E. If you're in Class E below 10,000 feet or below 2,500 feet AGL, it's not required. How about if you're here at 3,200 feet MSL? The floor of Class B airspace is 7,000 feet. Which airspace are you in? Correct, Class E. Remember, you're inside the 30 nautical mile ring, so is ADS-B required? Yes. How about if you're right here at 500 feet AGL, inside the 30 nautical mile ring, but outside of Class B airspace? Which airspace are you in? Correct, Class G. Is ADS-B required? Yes, again, because of the 30 nautical mile ring. Now let's zoom on over to El Paso, Texas. If you're flying right here at 5100 feet MSL, which class of airspace are you in? Correct, Class E, because you're below the Class C shelf. Is ADS-B required? No. How about if you're right here at 11,000 feet MSL, above the top of Class C airspace? Which airspace are you in? Correct, Class E airspace. Is ADS-B required? Yes, you are above 10,000 feet and also above 2,500 feet AGL. My friends, Thanks for watching. Make sure you smash that like button and subscribe so you'll get notifications when I make a new video. It takes a lot to produce these videos. If you'd like to contribute a couple bucks to help produce the next video, 
hit that link down below and then let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. Remember, keep the dirty side down.